producer one gave us a whisper rolling because producer two is asleep. So we'll see if <laughs> we'll see if I wake him up. Uh, but it is a big day, uh, not only because we just had our first Elite Sixteen in more than a month, but it was producer two's first birthday this week. So he got to celebrate by listening to dad commentate for a whole week. And so producer two, he will not be on the show today because he is asleep and we are about to leave for his big one year checkup. So a big happy birthday to producer two. It's actually been super fun because so many people, when they see us on the strand, they'll call Delaney and Austin producers one and two, and they just get such a kick out of it. And it's, it's been super fun. So glad to have producer two along for the ride. Sorry, he can't make this one, but he's partied out. You know, he, he can't, can't go a whole weekend just raging his face off and then come on the road to Paris. He needs a break. So he's earned the day off. This is his one-year birthday day. Now, on to the actual road to Paris. Evidently, Switzerland, uh, women from Switzerland love Mexico. So last week in Guadalajara for the challenge, Zoe Verge Dupre and Esme Bobner, they won their first gold medal as a team in their reward. They got to skip out on Tepic to get ready for this weekend's upcoming challenge in China. Now, this week... Nina Brunner and Tanya Huberly, they won their first Elite 16 gold medal as a team. And now it's not just their first Elite 16 gold medal, actually. It's just their first gold medal, period, on the Beach Pro Tour. And I do feel obligated to note they have won big tournaments before. They've won two European championships in 2021 and 2023. So it's not as if they have no experience winning, but it was their first gold medal on the Beach Pro Tour. And it's just sports are so awesome because it was so fun to see the emotions play out. And I'm going to have a few pictures going on if you're if you're watching. You can see the emotion on Nina's face and on Tanya's face, and, and they were crying afterwards. And it, Sports are just the greatest things in the world. I had a blast commentating that one with Kyle Friend. It's so good to see them finally get over the hump. I couldn't believe that they hadn't won a tournament on the Beach Pro Tour because for the longest time, I've considered them one of the best block defense teams in the world and Tanya when she's in system she's virtually unstoppable on offense and Nina Brunner her cut shot her angle attacks are so good and I almost fell over when I found out that they hadn't won a tournament until they wanted to peak and it was cool getting to chat with their coach Riva Vesic last week in Guadalajara and the whole reason that they played Guadalajara in the first place was to get them extra reps to get them with some pressure to have them feel the expectations to expect to win a medal and then in Guadalajara they didn't but it paid off because they got those extra reps, they got ready for Mexico, and then they won a huge gold medal in Topeak. Now, that has absolutely nothing to do with the Olympic race. I've long sharpied Nina and Tanya in. I just wanted to give them a huge shout-out, a much-deserved shout-out for winning gold. And huge shout-out, of course, goes to the Swedes. They're doing incredible things. Young David Amon and Jonathan Helvig. So fun to commentate. They've now made seven straight finals. The last time they haven't made a final was in Ostrava last June, and they had to forfeit. So it's been nearly a year since they haven't made a final of a tournament that they haven't forfeited. So they're just unbelievable. So good for the sport and so fun to watch. Now on to the actual Olympic race. So Cuba, I have been holding out and holding out and holding out. I haven't sharpied them in. Denise Austin saying, you got a sharpie, got a sharpie. Cuba with a bronze medal in the Topeak Elite 16, their first medal in an Elite 16, officially Sharpied. So they have, and that's early for Sharpie because they only have 10 total finishes, and yet they're at 6,580 points. So they're already averaging 658 points per event. And if they were to get dead last in the next two events, so they're signed up for the challenge in Shaman this week, and they're signed up for the challenge in Staria Blanki, Poland. And even if they were to get dead last, they would still have more than 7,000 points, which is the projected cut line. And they're not going to get dead last in both of them. They'll get at least a pair of ninths. And so Cuba, with a bronze medal out of the qualifier in the Topeka Elite 16, Sharpied in, they're going to the Olympics. Sam Schachter, Dan Deering, you can celebrate a little bit because if they don't make it in on points, their Continental Cup road to the Olympic Games just got that much easier because you don't have to play the juggernaut that is Cuba. And it, it's been so fun to watch these guys get better. I remember seeing them at a Norseca a few years ago in Veradero and Aguas Calientes, and you knew that they were talented, but it was kind of that standard sort of indoor team where they could jump high and hit hard, but they'd make a bunch of errors, and they're, they wouldn't make the smart plays. they get blocked a bunch. 
And now they're running this really cool tempo offense. Their coach has them just very skilled players. And they're a legit metal contender comparison. They're not just sort of going to be the pool of death, but at some point they'll just run out of fumes. Like they're going to be a legit metal contender in Paris. It's been awesome to watch. So Cuba, Denise, I'm doing it for you. Cuba, Sharpied, going to the Olympic Games. Storyline number two. So I'm not going to split it up between the men and the women because in Elite 16s, most of the teams, as I talked about with Damian Schumann, when we got to commentate together, they're already in. And so there aren't that many storylines for the Olympic race coming out of these elites. However... Carla Borger and Sandra Itlinger, Germany's number three team, they are making a compelling case as this Olympic race winds down. So after the Sakurima challenge, when Laura Ludwig and Luisa Littman took a silver medal, I thought that it might be pretty much over, that Ludwig and Littman, they were a shoe-in. But then Borger and Itlinger, they took a fourth in Recife, they took a fourth in Guadalajara, and then they took a fifth here in Topeka, a huge finish with a 27-25, 21-14 win in the ninth place rounds over Ludwig and Littman. Which was a bonus for two point for in two ways because you knocked out the country women that you're chasing and you improved your finish and so their fifth place finish puts them at number 19 in the Olympic rankings and they are down just 180 points to Ludwig and Lippmann. Now I, I still have to give the favorite to Ludwig and Lippmann because as a general rule on this show, as you might recall, we don't bet against goats and Ludwig is one of the goats of beach volleyball. But Borger and Itlinger. They're playing fantastic. And also Carla Borger, she knew the way to my heart. So in between Recife and Sakurima, we were on the same flight and she gave me her exit row seat. So, I mean, you just can't ask for any better gift than that. On to storyline number three, the Canadians. So as, as soon as this race gets even more interesting, you double down because Sarah Pavin and Molly McBain, they've been struggling this season. They hadn't won a match prior to Topeka. And then they lose 21-14, 21-11 in the final round of the qualifier to the Klinger sisters, who made a main draw, playing fantastic volleyball this season. But then you have two lucky losers because Anna Patricia and Duda dropped out because Duda had a fever. And then China's Chen Shu and Xin Yi Sha dropped out. And so you have two lucky losers. Pavin and McBain win the coin flip over Finland, who lost to Borger and Itlinger. So they get in. And then they get their first win of the season, their first true win of the season over Spain's Lily and Paula, also playing very good volleyball. They end up breaking pool, played very well in pool, went to three with Italians Marta Menegatti and Valentina Guattari, who took another fourth place finish. They almost went to three with Kelly Chang and Sarah Hughes, lost 25-27 in the second set. So they take a ninth, which is a 600-point finish, which is a, a usable finish. It's a good finish. And that bumps them up to 6,380 points, putting them at 531.6 per event. Sophie Bukovic and Heather Bansley, who are chasing them, are averaging 526.6 per event. So it's basically a dead tie between Pavin and McBain and Sophie and Heather, and they are both going to be straight into the main draw of the Shaman Challenge this upcoming week. And so it is going to be even more interesting than it already was. Now, that is basically all the major storylines that I have from Topeka. The other one, obviously, being the USA men, Trevor Crabb and Theo Bruner. They were straight into the main draw, snuck out of pool play with a win over Sam Cotafava and Paolo Nicolai, and then they got dusted pretty good by Steven Vandeveld and Matthew Emmers. No insane run in the third set to beat them this time, as happened in Guadalajara. So they took a ninth, a 600-point finish, Gives them a couple hundred more points in their Olympic race, just slightly edging the lead over Chase Bunninger and Miles Evans, but not enough where it really changes a whole lot. They are both straight into the main draw of the Shaman Challenge. And then Chase and Miles will have a huge opportunity because they're straight into the main draw of the Brasilia Elite 16 the following week. And so that is going to be, I think, the, the make-or-break tournament of this Olympic race for Chase and Miles, because when you're straight into the main draw of an elite, you can make huge moves, especially because I don't know how many teams are going to make the trip from China to Brasilia. And so if there's ever such thing as a weaker elite 16, you might have that one in Brasilia. So Brasilia is going to decide a lot of this Olympic race, but that's it for Topeka. I must say that producer one in the background is holding up this towel to block the light. She's my lighting manager as well today. Huge credit for producer one and mom of the year in year one for producer two. 
It's been an absolute blast having my producers along for the ride of the road to Paris. And we will catch you guys after the Shaman Challenge. So that'll be up this week. The qualifier starts Thursday, Wednesday for the West Coast because of the time shift. Catch everything on VBTV. As always, use our code SANDCAST-20. That's all caps, and that's going to get you 20% off. So I will see you next Monday after the Shaman Challenge. Shoots.